Hello, praise the Lord. I want to welcome you to this very wonderful time we have in the presence of the Lord. I believe that the presence of the Holy Ghost that is with us is going to bless you. I believe that we are not alone. The Lord is with us and His presence is upon the speaking of His word and we will never be the same. Uh, for some time now, I've been talking about a glorious youth in a glorious church. We will shine and have already done the part one. In the part one, I made a case that the church is the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ and Jesus married the church or, or the church was betrothed to Jesus and Jesus has paid for the customary right of the church. He has done it. I mean, he has paid the dowry and Jesus has left to go and prepare a place and left the church physically under the control and the guard of the Holy Spirit who is working on her day by day. Jesus will come for us and the Bible says that we shall be with the Lord wherever we are. I made you know that everybody in the church is blessed because God has called us from various walks of life and he has made us his own people, a people that have become his own possession. And so I made us know that that is our place as a church. There were many things that we did. I encourage you to go and look for part one and then watch it, listen to it and soak it in. This is part two. And today my focus will be to look at the glorious youth in a glorious church. Yes, last week I looked at the glorious church more, but this time I'm going to look at the glorious youth in a glorious church, and then we'll move on uh, someday. I remember that last week, one of the key texts I used when I was looking, when I did the introduction, was Ephesians 5, verse 25 to 27. I'll read it quickly, and then move on from there. So turn with me, every one of you, come on. Take your Bible, take your iPads, and what have you, and let's go. I'll be reading from the NIV. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. I made you know after reading this text and engaging it that the church is the bride of Christ, the wife of Christ or the bride of Christ or betrothed to Christ. And when Jesus has come for us to heaven, there will be our wedding occasion. The Bible calls it the marriage of the Lamb. And we read from Revelation uh, chapter 19, verse 6 to 9. And I remember that I illustrated that the garment, the holy garment or the linen of the church for that wedding is the righteous deeds of God's people. The righteous deeds or our work of holiness. And so that is that. So last week I made you know that Jesus he continues to prepare, on, I mean, the church. He continues to wash the church and cleanse the church by the word of God, the power of the word of God. I made you know that the word of God has power to cleanse us from our sins and to make us into that virtuous, that glorious bride that Jesus will be proud to call his wife. And I made you know that the Holy Ghost is working with Jesus. And Jesus brings in many people, pastors, apostles, teachers, and what have you, to prepare that church. I made you know that the goal of the church, or what is most important in the church, is that the church keeps on being that kind of wife that Jesus will be pleased with. Jesus will come ultimately, and is not coming for a church with blemish, or wrinkle, or any certain thing, or with spots. He's coming for a church that has none of this. And so this text laid a lot of emphasis on the beauty of the church. The Bible says that in the same way, uh, Jesus loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy by cleansing her by the washing with the water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without spot or wrinkle. This is about the beauty of the church. It makes the church so beautiful. So let's build on from there today. Let's look at, let's begin with uh, the same book, the book of Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10, and I'll be reading from the NIV again, from the NIV. And Apostle Paul wrote that his intent was that now through the church, the intent of God is that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. God's intent is that through the church, the manifold or the diversified or the great and the marvelous wisdom of God should be made known 
It should be made known to who? To the rulers, to the authorities, to the principalities, to the spiritual wickedness that are in high places. The mind of God is that his manifest wisdom. In other words, God has some great wisdom that is displaying. And God has chosen nobody and nothing else than the church. And his mind, his strategy is that he wants to demonstrate his great wisdom to the rulers of darkness, to Satan and his rulers and his authorities. He just wants to show his wisdom. Later I'll let you know why God is doing that. But for now, it suffices to say that God's will, his mind, his purpose, his intention is that through the church, his manifest wisdom will be manifested to the watching uh, principalities and powers and authorities. Now, last week we built a case that Ephesians 5, 25, I mean 24, 27 is about the beauty of the church. How the church must be glorious. How the church must be holy. How the church must be beautiful so that the husband, Jesus, will not be shy to have her as his own bride. But this scripture we read is taking the argument, is taking the case beyond just beauty. He's bringing another part, another thing that God has in mind about the church. And this one is about work. It's not only getting polished up. It's not only getting beautiful. But it's about work. God's intent is that through the church, or what the church must do, is to show forth the wisdom of God to the watching angels, to the watching rulers, principalities, authorities, and powers. That is the church. That means that, yes, the church is the bride of Christ, and God has chosen her and all that, but beyond that, or in addition to that, God has chosen the church so that he would do something. He will allow himself, he will avail herself so that the, I mean, the wisdom of God will be made known. And as I said, that this calling means that the church must not only remain a virtuous bride, all dressed up and doing nothing, all pure and doing nothing. No, it is not only called to live a holy life and to sit for Jesus. No, but the church has been called unto a divine mandate, unto a divine call. And what is that called? To demonstrate God's wisdom to the watching host of principalities and powers. This means working. When we say that the church has been called to, I mean, to show forth the wisdom of God to the watching angels and, and the principalities and all that, what we are saying is that the church has been called so that it will work for the interest of God. The church has been called to ensure that the plans of God come to pass and that the plans of the devil and his authorities and his rulers and his cohort fail. The church has been called to ensure that the world is taken for Jesus and that the will of the devil and the plan of the devil to take over lives and to destroy the world doesn't come to pass. In other words, Satan and his minions, his cohort, his angels, his batch are looking on. They have an interest on the people in the world. They want to take over. But God said, I am going to win. And I don't even want to go and be doing it myself. I want to choose something that is weak. I want to choose that something that was nobody. And I want to use them to demonstrate my wisdom that I'm able to beat the devil. I'm able to win. My light is able to overshine, I mean drive away darkness. That when I have a stake and the devil has a stake, I will win. But I choose not to do the battle and the whole engagement myself. I choose to pick something that is weak. Something that the devil could afford, but I choose to rather use them and show my wisdom in dealing with the devil through that. Let me tell you, the church is very important to make sure that we don't disappoint God. We have to take over the world. We have to make sure that the interest of God is sustained and that the kingdom of God grows rather than, uh, rather than allow the devil. We must take over and win for Jesus as Satan watches helplessly because there's nothing he can do. We will be a glorious church in not only parading ourselves with holiness. We will be a glorious church with not only parading ourselves on our nature and our beauty, not only that, but also by taking responsibility in destroying the works of the devil. Jesus, our husband, Jesus, our senior brother, came to destroy the works of the devil. 
And I want us to read from the book of first, the book of first John, chapter 3, verse 8. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. And so here in this text, we know that Jesus, who is the husband of the church, Jesus, who is our senior brother as believers, the Bible says that the reason he came was to destroy the works of the devil. And Jesus did exactly that. And by doing that, he brought glory to God. When you read John chapter 17, Jesus said that I have fulfilled the reason why you bring me into you brought me into this world, and Father, I have brought you glory. What is Jesus teaching us? By being able to overcome the works of the devil, by destroying the works of the devil, and by making sure that the kingdom of God takes over. While the angels of the devil they looked on, the angels of the devil they looked on helplessly. He had brought God glory. In other words, when the church succeeds in doing the will of God and making sure that the plans of the devil fail, we would have brought God glory. When a young man is able to stand for the interests of God and make sure that the kingdom of God is winning through his life and ministry, that the kingdom of the devil is failing, he has brought God glory. Jesus said that by destroying the works of the devil, I have brought you glory. And he succeeded as a glorious person who came to fulfill the interests of his father against the interests of the devil. What a glorious person. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus has left the same work for us to do. He has left work for us to continue. That work of destroying the works of the devil. In our own generation, God has called us that we are to stand for the interests of God. That the interest of God is not lost. But rather... That the interest of God wins as the work of the devil is destroyed by us. Jesus therefore left us that work to continue. And this is where I want to bring you to the book of John, the gospel according to St. John. Look at that where, uh, chapter 14, verse 12 and 13. Look at that beautiful scripture. John chapter 14, uh, verse uh, 12 and verse 13. Those two verses. Again, let me read from the NIV. I want to encourage you to pick your Bible. Maybe look at other version uh, so that you can get a beauty of, of, of that uh, story. Very truly, I tell you that whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask me in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Let me pick it again. Very truly, I tell you that whoever believes in me will do the works that I've been doing and they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. I'm no longer here. You must step into the space. And then they say that, and I will do whatever you ask me. In other words, you will do it in your own generation. Make sure that the interest of God is sustained. The kingdom of God grows and the works of the devil are brought down because I leave the space for you. That is Jesus talking. Then what, what, what even marvels me is verse 13. He said, and I will do as you step into the space and as you destroy the works of the devil and as you go on to make the interest of God stand, I will also be by the Father and I will do whatever you ask me as you work. Whatever you need to succeed, whatever you ask me, I will do it for you so that the Father will be glorified. So that the Father will be glorified. Because the Father is glorified when we do his bidding. And when the devil, the power of the devil and whatever he's doing is destroyed. And let's go and look at this text that I consider to be the main text. Remember, I've been doing this series on a glorious youth in a glorious church. We will shine. And I've already dealt with the part of the church. I am now looking at the glorious youth. My emphasis is on you, the young person. And so the glorious youth in the glorious church, you are the one we are talking about. And this text that I'm going to pick is so central to this focus that I gave to what I'm sharing uh, today. And so let's open the Bible to uh, Psalm, the book, uh, I mean the Psalms. Go to Psalm 8, verse 2 and 3. Psalm 8, verse 2 and 3. I believe you are there. If you are there, you can begin to read Psalm 8. Psalm 8, verse 2 and 3. Verse 2 and 3. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established 
a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. To silence the foe and the avenger. Let me read the New King James Version in addition to that. New King James Version. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infant, you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. Let me take it again. Or maybe let's take another one. Very youthful, uh, I mean, version. Maybe like New Living Translation. Or okay, let me just pick the Amplified. to also blow it up well for us to see. The Amplified version. Out of the mouths of infant and nursing babes, you have established strength because of your adversaries that you might silence the enemy and make the revengeful cease. So, this text is telling us that out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, infants, God has ordained some strength. God has put some strength. Why did he do that? Because of his enemy, because of the devil, because of the authorities, because of the rulers, principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places who are working against the interests of God. The Bible says that because of them, God has put some strength, some power in the mouth of of babes and sucklings and what why did god do that he says so that you will destroy or so that you will steal the avenger let me read uh i mean uh this this verse i mean for the amplified out of the mouth of babes and nursing babes you have established strength because of your adversaries that you might silence the enemy and make the revengeful cease make it cease make it cease and verse 3 again in the NIV, sorry, verse 2. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. I love the word silence. To shut him up. To shut him up. So that indeed out of the mouth of babes, when the Bible talks about the babes or the sucklings or the nursing infant, what is the Bible saying? What is the Bible saying? Follow me as I try to unpack that side a bit. When the Bible talks about the infants there, the Bible is talking about, number one, the immature. The immature. Those who are not mature. People who are not mature. The Bible is talking about the inexperienced. People who are not experienced. They are not mighty men. Like the Bible talks about Goliath. The Bible says Goliath was a mighty man of war. He had been in war and battles from his youth, experienced and established. And once he stood there, you knew that this was a formidable man. No, they are not the ones God is interested in. But rather, God chose a David, somebody who had never been in a military rehearsal session. I mean, no, no military. I mean, he didn't have anything military. Ordinary, ordinary. The Bible says he was on the bush. He is the one God chose. And so when the Bible is talking about the, I mean, the babes there, he's talking about the inexperienced, the immature. Uh, he's talking about the, 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 what do we call it? And the raw. People who are just raw. The unschooled. He's talking about the ordinary. Those who are not wise. Those who know they are nobody. This is what we are talking about. And then it's also talking about the young of age, like us youth. All these ones are at. The Bible says that God has put his strength, I mean, uh, in the mouth of these people who are nobodies. And the reason God did that was that he wanted to win the, uh, allow me to call it the struggle with the devil. He wanted to win it. Not by doing the best, I mean, not by he himself doing it or getting anybody that we will say that they were strong enough, but the nobodies, the nobodies, the nobodies. Are you somebody? You may not find the glory of God in your life. If you think you are somebody, you must make yourself a nobody that God can find somebody in you that he can use. Pride is nothing. I mean, sometimes you meet many young people who are so proud. Where are you going with that? The Bible says that pride comes just before a fall. When you see a young person so proud and all that, we are only approaching a fall. But the Bible says we are not of them. Hallelujah. We are not of such people. And so the immature, the inexperienced, the uncompromising, the raw, the unschooled, 
and, and, and all that the ordinary people and the young of age, these are the ones that the Bible is talking about in Psalm 8, when he say that in the mouth of days, God has ordained his strength. Let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians. Try to follow me. Try to let's move. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 1 verse 25. Going. 1 Corinthians 1 25. Uh, going. I'll read from 25 to 27. 25 says from the NIV, For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many of you were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God showed the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God showed the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Hallelujah. God showed the lowly things. That is what I'm talking about here. And so when Psalm 8 says that God has ordained strength in the mouth of babes, these are the ones, the nobodies. They are the ones that God surprisingly is interested in. Is interested in. And as I was explaining, young people, youth, we are part of that. We are part of the babes we are talking about here. Because we are so inexperienced. In many cases, we are immature. We are now growing into maturity. And, and we don't know it all. We are the ones God is talking about as suckling, I mean as sucklings. We still depend on our parents. We depend on them in, in many ways. We are not completely independent. And so we are the ones the Bible is talking about. We are the ones the Bible is talking about. So in effect, God is saying that he has ordained strength in our mouths. God is saying that he has put something in our mouth, in our lives. Remember that when we are talking about babes, the way to put something in them is through their mouth. That is why we breastfeed them. I mean, the way to keep them alive is putting something in their mouth to sustain them. And whatever you have to give a babe, you are giving it through the mouth. In many cases. And so when God says that he has put strength in the mouth of babes, he is saying that he has made an investment in our lives. He's saying that his great power is in our, in our mouth. He has ordained that strength uh, in those of us who are young people or weak people. And he wants to depend on us to silence the enemy so that we will bring him glory. Oh, hallelujah. Can I have your loudest amen? I said God has chosen us and God has put his strength in us. That though we are nobody, the strength of God will make us do great things. We will be able to silence the enemy. And it will bring glory to our God. We will be a glorious youth indeed. Because our glorious king will be proud of us. God has many options, but he decided to pick us. And when I read the Bible, and I see how God will choose us, like me, I am amazed. How God will choose you and I. Look at the scripture like Luke chapter 10 verse 17. Let's learn something there quickly and move on. I'll be reading from 17 to 21, Luke chapter 10, verse 17. I'm waiting for you. Quickly move your Bible there and let's go. We are learning something, are we? Aren't we? Yes. I believe you are being blessed. Luke chapter 10, verse 17 to 21. 17. The 72 returned with joy. This was a time that Jesus had sent the disciples in twos. They had gone to wherever Jesus himself would go. They had gone to preach, demonstrated the kingdom of God, healed the sick, raised the dead, and did all that, and they came back. So the Bible is saying that. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. In your name, the demons bow before us. And he replied, when you went, I saw Satan fall like lightning. Or he said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and on scorpions and to overcome all the power. Remember, all the power. Of the enemy and nothing will harm you you can do all these things and go and sleep and yawn on top uh, what do we call it and snore on top he said all oh, power I, let me read verse 19 I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you however do not rejoice that the spirit submit to you that is not important but rather rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Then verse 21, I need your attention here. 
At that time, Jesus, full of joy, through the Holy Spirit said, in other words, after saying those things, after, after, after saying that you were ordinary guys, you were ordinary fishermen. Uh, Peter, I remember that you were an ordinary fish at Bethsaida. I called this one here. Somebody was a task collector. I pulled all of you together, ordinary guys. And I pulled you together. And I gave you the power and authority. And you have gone around preaching my name. And you have seen it. Satan fall down. The dominions of darkness, spiritual weakness in high places, rulers and authority, they bow down to you. Yes, they bow down to you. I saw Satan himself falling like a lightning. So, Jesus, after saying all this and said, I don't rejoice because they forbid. Rather, something better is that you belong to heaven. You are citizens there. Then listen, immediately he said that he was caught up in the spirit. And he became excited in the spirit. At that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, I praise you, Father, Lord, of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned. And you have revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what pleases you. This is what pleases you. He said, Father, you have done this great thing. When I look at how it has happened, I'm just excited. I praise you because you have hidden this sin from those who think that they are learned and they are wise and, and all that. Rather, you have revealed them to little children. Now, listen, let's come to the Bible. Let's come to you understanding the Bible. When Jesus was talking, he wasn't talking to little children who had been born. He was talking to his disciples who had gone, who had gone on the field, preached the gospel, and had come with good news. But Jesus said that you have revealed these things to little children. He was referring to the disciples as little children. They said they didn't have any power. They didn't know they were unschooled. They were raw. They were, they were, they were, they were what? Immature. And they allowed God, and God found some people in them, trained them, went, sent them out, and then they were able to overcome. And Jesus said that this is what pleases you. It pleases the Father that immature people, that young people, for that matter, he uses us. I believe that you are listening to the word of God and you are being blessed. Through this, I mean, through this, through little ones like us and the immature, as I've already explained, God demonstrates manifold, manifold wisdom. He plays the oware or the dummy. Pa, 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 and the devil is confused. When God gets raw people, ordinary people, young people like you and I, who have allowed him, he uses us to demonstrate his wisdom. When they say it cannot be, it is able to be. And the devil sees and is confused. I pray that you let God find such a person in you. I pray that you become a glorious youth in the hand of God. Such young people we are talking about, they become God's glorious youth. That's what we are talking about. Satan is making too much noise in town, ladies and gentlemen. He's causing a lot of commotion in town. But God has chosen you and I to silence him and to destroy his works. And we must bring God glory in this. He is holding people in servitude. Satan is holding people in servitude against their will and against what God has chosen to do. We have been called to destroy his works like Jesus did. We must rise up to do the will of the Father and to destroy the work of the enemy. We must put the devil to silence. Like when he sent out the disciples in twos, those raw guys with the power of the Holy Spirit, having made, I mean, allowed Jesus to make them, the Bible said that they went out there and put the devil to silence. This is the glorious youth we are talking about. The one who is able to do the Father's bidding and bring glory to God. God depends on us to bring him glory, ladies and gentlemen. He depends on us. I want to share the story that I read about Idahosa. Idahosa wrote in his book, Find His Bone, that there was a time in his life when he was growing up and coming up as a young person. And he heard some announcement on the radio in his city, Benin City, that all the witches in the world were going to have a conference at ben in Benin City. Then... He said that no, it will not come to pass. That conference will not come to pass. This is a story I love narrating. So this is a story I love sharing. Normally when I'm preaching, I love sharing this story. And Idahosa said that 
when he heard that announcement in his small city, I mean his city, Benin City, he said, no, this meeting cannot come off. I cannot be here and, and, and demons come into our town to have a conference. It will not come to pass. He heard this announcement on the radio. And so quickly, he phoned in the radio, I mean, he called in the radio, uh, the radio station, and said that I heard you making some announcement. It cannot come to pass. It will not happen here. Then the guy, I mean, from the radio station said, no, the, the doctor of the witches in town brought his announcement, and you are saying it will not come to pass. Say, yes, it will not come to pass. The man said, it's getting interesting. Then he called, he said, hold on, hold on, we are coming. You call the witch doctor and said, there's a young man who is challenging you. The announcement you brought, he said that it will not come to pass. And so they put him on and said, no, who said nobody can cancel it? This one, the doctor of the marine, I mean, the, 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 the leader of the marine world is coming, the, the head of this is coming, uh, these demons are coming, this one, and Satan himself will be here. Nobody can cancel, not even God. Not even God. And then he said, man of God, did you hear that? I said, yes, I heard him. Then the journalist said, it's getting interesting. Can we have you, can we have you for a session, a live session tomorrow morning? And so <laughs> quickly, you know, journalists and what they do, he quickly mobilized them into a live studio session the following morning. And so in the Hussam writes that he, he got to the studio and then the way doctor also came and the journalist was sitting in front of them. And then, no, no, it was live. It was live, everybody was watching. Then he said, the general said, Idahusa, you were saying the program cannot come off. What, what's your reason? Why are you saying that? Then Idahusa said, well, it is his program. Let him begin to talk. And so the witch doctor started talking. And this one, Satan himself is coming. And the ruler of the, of, I mean, of the, of the, of, 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 I mean, of the air is coming. When you go to the marine world, you'll be coming witches from here, from here, and so many things. And not even God. And stop us. So the journalist now switched to Idahusa and said that, Idahusa, did you, what, what, what do you say to that? The man said, not even God can stop it. Then Idahusa said, yes, the way doctor is right. God will not stop them. Yes, because I'm here. I will stop them. This is too small for God. Oh, hallelujah. And so Idahusa got up and said, I don't have anything to say. I want to kill this man, the juju man. I want to kill him right now. He's going to die in this studio. Hey, come on, be on your feet. Then the juju man, I mean, Shepherd was on his feet. He said, you are going to drop dead right now. But I'm good because my God is a merciful God. I'm giving you only a chance. Would the program come off or it will not come? Will you do it or it, I mean, will it happen or it will not? If you say yes, it will happen. You drop dead right now. Will it happen? Will it happen? He said, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. And then, when he was shivering, fearing that he would die, he said, my God is a gracious God. And so I'm giving you this opportunity to leave. The program will not come off. They left the studio, and Idahosa said that when he was descending the staircase, the Holy Ghost said, that's my boy. You know your left from your right, my son. You know your left from your right. Because I have given you wherever you tread your foot. I have given you and I've ordained power in your mouth. To destroy the work of the enemy. The long and the short of that story is that that conference could not come off. It couldn't come off because a child of God knew his left from his right. God had ordained strength. Now listen, as I bring today's session to an end, I want you to know that the glorious youth is the young person who has vouched and he has given himself not only to become, I mean, a bride of Christ in terms of beauty, but also the one who is moving forward to make sure that the wisdom of God, as we read in Ephesians 3.10, the wisdom of God that is supposed to be demonstrated for the watching demonic empire to see will happen in his life. God doesn't call you to waste time to sit on pews in church. If you belong to a PIWC English assembly, listen to me. God didn't call you to just sit down in church. God called you to work. And Jesus has left some work. Don't be a church pew warmer. That is the way to die as a young person. Go to church all right, but be in the ministry of the church. Be in source winning. Be in follow-up. Go for schools outreach. I mean, do something. 
the doing something for Jesus continually in your life as a young person. When you do that, you are working so that the interest of God is sustained. The kingdom of God is built and the kingdom of the devil is destroyed. And Jesus will be proud of you. You would have been a glorious youth in a glorious church. This is only the first part of talking to young people, the youth. I'm going to do next week another part that still looks at the youth again. And that still looks at a glorious youth in a glorious church before I conclude the series. And so, wherever you are right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I believe that the word of God has come to you. The Lord is calling you not to waste your days as a young person. You are wise. You are strong because God has made you so. His power is in your mouth. He has ordained strength in your mouth. Rise up and do something. I want you to get up and pray right now. You are thanking God that His word has come to you. You are saying that, oh God, thank you for your word. The Bible says the word of God came to Jeremiah. The word of God came to Isaiah. Today, the word of God has come to you too. And God is saying he count on you. Give him the glory that the word of God has come to you and begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Avail yourself. Say, Lord, I avail myself. Lord, I will move on. Lord, I will not only sit, I will not waste time. I will rise up unto service. We have been called to demonstrate the wisdom of God to the watching angels and to the watching world. Come on, make God proud. Come on, talk to God wherever you are. Recall Zinimi Korabashanda. Recall Labadin Father, we take our place in the name of the Lord Jesus as your people, as young people of strength. Father, oh God, you have called us and ordained us, oh God, by your mighty power and strength that we are to go and build your kingdom. We so for God, build a church. Do great things, Father, to continue the work that your son Jesus began. Father, we say yes to that call. And from today, we shall take over the spaces, Father, and build a kingdom. We silence the devil, Father, oh God, and we pull him down. We are praying that do with us, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. There are two more things I want to do. I want to give you the life, the chance to give your life to Jesus if you don't know him. And then after that, I'll pray for every young person. If you are listening to me and you have not given your life to Jesus, confess him as the Lord and Savior of your life. It may be getting too late for you. Let me give you the opportunity to surrender your life to Jesus. Pray this prayer that, dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God and you came to die to save me from my sins. And so today, I receive you into my life as my Lord and my Savior. Lord, I will serve you all the days of my life, so help me God. Well, if you pray that prayer, the Bible says, with the heart we believe into righteousness, and with the mouth we confess unto salvation. Once you have done this, the Bible says that God is faithful to forgive you your sins. Your sins have been forgiven. Your name has been written in heaven. You are a child of God. God's Spirit has come into your life. All you need to do is to join your other brothers and sisters who are children of God in the church. Find us in the Church of Pentecost or any other church that believes in the Bible and go there and be one of them. You can as well send me a text right now or a message on the Facebook live wall and say, Pastor, I gave my life to Jesus. I'll follow you up when I see that and will help you to make your journey to heaven a successful one. Now, wherever you are listening to me, if you're a young person, raise up your hand wherever you are. If you're born again, if you're in the church, wherever you are, the will of God is that the power that he can put in your mouth will work. The power that he has put in your mouth will work. The will of God is not only that. Listen, every young person will be doing something. And if you don't engage in doing something for God, you'll find yourself doing something for the devil. But we are not of that. We belong to God. And so, raise up your hand wherever you are. As the power of God finds you, as the power of the Holy Ghost, as I pray for you, wherever you are, in the name of the Lord Jesus, may the hand of God come upon you. May the Lord shake you again. May the strength of God increase in your life. May God put a new strength in your mouth. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says that open thou your mouth wide, and I, the Lord your God, I'll fill it. In the name of Jesus, as you raise your hand, and as you have opened your spirit, Holy Ghost, fill them. And raise a generation of young people who cannot sit down, but to move around, and to Lord with energy and fire. Ensure that the interest of God is sustained. The work of God is done. Souls are won. The gospel is preached. And Father... That the kingdom of the devil diminishes and it loses its interest. This is the wisdom you want to demonstrate, Lord, in our lives. 
And I pray for every young person listening to me that this wisdom will be demonstrated in their lives. I give you glory, Father, for you have answered this prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you so much, my dear friend. I'm happy that you follow us every Monday and every Wednesday and every Saturday. We know that this broadcast is meaningful because you share it. And we want to encourage you, please share it and share it with your friends. Send us a comment and then let's move on by obeying the word of God which has been blessed, I mean, which has been shared with you. May the Lord bless you. I'm Pastor Vinicius Hagen and we love you so much from the Church of Pentecost Youth Ministry. Bye-bye.